Hey coin collectors and welcome to DC Coin World International Coin Channel and today we're going to look at the 1943 Mercury Dime from the United States of America. 90% silver dime. Came in three different varieties. Came in the Philadelphia or Plain, uh, the Denver or D, in the San Francisco or S mint marks. The mint marks are all on the back, but first I want to talk to you about how 1943 was kind of a special year. Kind of the year of no copper, if that makes any sense to you. Uh, and I want to show you some coins from 1943. Let's start with this one on the top. This is a penny. But it's not a copper penny, it's a steel penny. In 1943, they didn't make um, copper pennies, they made steel pennies. And so, no copper in that one. The next one is the nickel. In 1943, um, they made the nickel, but they made the nickel and they put silver in it. So hardly any copper in that one. Why no copper in the penny? Why no copper in the nickel? Well, that's because they uh, it was in the middle of World War II and they needed the copper for armaments. So um, when when they were uh, for bullets and shells and stuff like that, so they didn't put copper in either the penny or the nickel, even though the nickel, it's odd because we call it a nickel, but it's mostly copper, 75% uh, copper, I believe, very little nickel in the nickel. Uh, but this nickel wasn't... Uh, it didn't have copper in it. It had silver in it. And you can tell the silver ones because they'll have the mint mark up above the Monticello, Thomas Jefferson's home. Next, of course, they, they made the quarter. Now, how many of these coins did they make? Well, they made a billion pennies. So if you find a steel penny, you think that, you know, maybe it's uh, really worth a lot. They made, you know, of course, the the DDS in the Philadelphia penny. Um, they made a billion of them, so the, the steel pennies are not worth much unless they're in incredibly good shape. The nickels, they made 390 million, so uh, there's still plenty of these around, and people save them because they're silver. The quarters, um, they made uh, 137 and a half million. There's plenty of these quarters around. And this, of course, is a 90% quarter. We tip it up and you can see the quarter. Um, the mint mark would be right down here on the bottom of the quarter. So that means this is a Philadelphia quarter. And, of course, they made the Walking Liberty half dollars. And this is Liberty Walking. It's the half dollar that came before Ben Franklin. Um, and they um, stopped making these in 1947 and started making Franklin in 1948. And of course, it had the eagle on the back. Uh, and the mint mark on these would have been right here, but there isn't any. So they had a silver half. They had silver quarter. They had a silver nickel. They had steel penny. And they did not have, I mean, you could still use the old piece dollars, but they didn't have any dollar coins that came out in 1943. But guess what they did have? Well, this is interesting. You've probably heard of these before. They had silver certificates. So this is a, a dollar from, uh, this is a $35, which were they still using in 1943. In fact, this uh, version of the dollar came out in the 40s. Um, it says silver certificate at the top. And down here it says $1 in silver payable to the bearer on demand. So you could get silver for a dollar also. In other words, you could take your silver, your dollar to the bank, uh, or to the U.S. Mint, uh, I'm sorry, and the U.S. Mint would give you one dollar's worth of silver. All right, so back to the dimes. It's a mercury dime, and the mercury dime, of course, um, design was Adolf A. Weinman, and you can tell uh, the initials are right here, right here, right here. It's an A an A and a W kind of entwined. It says Liberty at the top and God we trust here. The date here, 1943. In uh, Mercury, the God Mercury is on the front of these wearing a Phrygian cap, they call it. A, essentially a winged cap. And on the back is where you find the mint mark. So here's the mint mark here for Denver, way down at the bottom. The way that you decide how much these are worth 
is you look at these bands here and the ribbons across and see if you can get a full bands version, which of course this really isn't. There's no separation between these. There should be, there's actually two set, three sets of two bands together. You can see a little bit of separation there. So this is not gonna be a full bands version. How many did they make? Well, at Denver, the D meant they made 71.9 million. Uh, at the Philadelphia Mint, they made 191.7 million, and I'm hoping this is an S. At the San Francisco Mint, they made 60.4 million. So between the three of them, they made about 324 million dimes. Again, these are worth about three bucks plus each because they're worth almost that much in silver alone. If you melted them down in silver, you'd get almost three. You'd get a few. Uh, well, you wouldn't get quite three bucks for these for each, but you would get enough so that it makes the minimum value about three dollars. The maximum value on these, once you get up to a full steps MS65, they don't go huge. They're only they're all less than a hundred dollars for even for a full steps version of these if you look in the US coin digest. So not huge amounts for these, but they're still pretty nice. All right, so let's call 1943 the year of the silver. And there's our silver certificate. And there's our silver walking liberty. And there's our silver quarter. And there's our silver nickel. And then here's our silver dimes. And finally, we'll cap it off with a steel penny. Oops, maybe. Have a great day from DC Coin World International Coin Channel.